Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, how proper mineral nutrition can impact your operation. We'll learn from both producers and experts from Purina. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen starts right now. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're sitting down with several producers and nutrition experts to learn how proper mineral nutrition can make a positive difference in your herd. And joining me in the studio are Rod Newlick, Director of Production Livestock Marketing with Land Lakes Purina Feeds, Dr. Ron Scott, Director of Beef Cattle Research, also with Land Lakes Purina, Ben Rogers comes to us from Meeker, Colorado, and is a cow-calf producer there, and J.D. Sexton, a uh, Land Lakes Purina dealer in, from uh, Craig, Colorado, with MJK Sales. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Well, I want to get right to it, and Ben, let's start with you as a producer yourself. Uh, as you think about uh, selecting a nutritional provider, I'd just be interested to know what are the qualities and characteristics you're looking for in a good nutritional supplier? Well, Kevin, I'm looking for a, a, or a provider who can uh, serve my needs in a way that, uh, that I know I'm gonna get the best economic benefits out of the mineral. Uh, a well-proven company, like is, for instance, Perina has a, a very good track record. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we look for those kind of things and uh, do a little research at home and uh, and then fight we found uh, you know not far from Meeker and Craig we could we could find a Purina dealer that uh, would work with us there very good and, and and tell me a little bit more about how Purina has met some of those needs and addressed some of those characteristics that you look for well we have a in in our area uh, a mineral a good mineral program is is something that we need for sure and uh, when I visited with our Purina uh, reps uh, we talked about uh, mineral and in, in, uh, one of our major concerns in our area is copper deficiency. Um, and, and in a case where a lot of times in the summer we have a hard time getting mineral to them, we really need to fortify those cattle in the winter months to get that mineral in them. And so we uh, visited with them, found some good products to try, and, and uh, they've really worked well for us. You know, there's a lot of research that goes into uh, nutritional products for, for livestock. Why is that important from a producer standpoint? Well, it's, it's, it's key for instance, uh, for economic reasons, we need to do the best job we can as far as trying to get uh, our, uh, you know, our cattle healthy uh, from start to finish. And if we do our job, um, then uh, our, our cattle are, uh, they, they seem to do better as far as uh, breed up uh, health. Health is major in our area as far as uh, in the spring, you know, we have a lot of wet storms come through. Mm -hmm. And if we put those cattle on a good mineral program through the cow, uh, and then uh, we can see it through calving and then in through the fall, and when we uh, send those calves out, I know that uh, our buyer is going to get a product that he can just keep on uh, going down the road with. Well, I, I want to put you on the spot a minute and, and, and ask you about the results you've seen specifically with Purina products. Tell us a little bit about your experience. You know, we've, uh, uh, we've started with the Avela 4 product, uh, the Avela 4 tubs. We feed the Avela 4 tubs to our, uh, our uh, cows. And uh, being on a, we run on a, on a public lands environment, so in the summer it's really hard to get the tubs out to the cattle. So as we bring those cattle back in the fall, we'll get them on a, on a good loose mineral program. We, we feed the complete tin product. And then we move into, as we move into the winter, we'll supplement with some protein, some uh, 3013 uh, rangeland tubs. Mm -hmm. And then as we move, about 45 days out from calving, we'll go ahead and uh, start the Avela 4 tubs. Mm. Um, and then as uh, we move into calving, we'll still provide the Avela 4 tubs. As we start having uh, uh, calves reach about two, three weeks old, we like to get out a lot of loose mineral and we use the uh, complete uh, seven and a half wind and rain product with CTC Tasco in it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, we really notice that those calves will go to lick in that mineral mm. as well. It seems like just a total package for us. That's outstanding. J.D., you're a dealer for Purina, and I'd just be interested to know what caused you to want to become a dealer in the first place. 
Well, uh, I had the opportunity to, to get involved with uh, the cattle industry in, uh, in my region and, and uh, get involved with producers that we uh, um, deal with on an everyday basis and uh, able to, to help them with maybe some nutritional things that they might deal with. Um, you know, we all know that in this business we're trying to make money mm -hmm. and, um, you know, if we can help them uh, save a dollar and, uh, and, and extend some available resources that they have to make their ranches more profitable and more productive, um, have that opportunity to do that and, and look forward to that opportunity. So That's outstanding. You know, your perspective as a dealer gives you a unique look inside the company, and I'd just be interested to know, what does it mean to work for a company that is so dedicated to research like Purina? I, I think the research that, that Purina uh, does with their feed products is huge. Um, the biggest thing for me is is uh, trust that uh, when I'm I'm out selling uh, a product uh, to a producer like Ben, um, when when I talk to Ben and tell him that this product is going to to perform like this, I, I know it's going to um, because I have that backing that that uh, Perina's done with the research facility in St. Louis and uh, all the time and the commit commitment that they put into their products. Um, so that's huge. Um, it also allows us to kind of have a niche in our in our region in our market because um, we do have that backing and that research with the feed, and uh, really sets us apart um, with our producers because uh, they also know that that they're getting a, a great technology and a great resource through Purina Feed. JD, can you give us some specific examples of how Purina has uh, really made a difference in your market over in Western Colorado? I would say that the biggest thing that Purina does. Um, you know, with the uh, the brand, uh, it's allowed producers like Ben to uh, have products that are going to make their operations um, more efficient and more productive. Um, it's allowed us to get um, different types of feed things um, that were, you know, typically maybe a lot of guys across the country don't have that opportunity mm -hmm. to have. Um, you know, also with the uh, the ability that Perina allows ourselves as dealers to get involved with their research facility in St. Louis um, to better educate ourselves so that it allows us to better educate our producers. Mm -hmm. And um, that's huge, you know. I mean, it, those guys have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to answer those questions, um, it really does help. You know, they, they get confident with things. So, And I have some more questions for you all yet today, but uh, this is a great start to our conversation. We'll be right back to continue this great discussion with more on Purina's research and management solutions. Plus, a look at a new Purina product that makes a difference you can see. Stay with us. No storm is too powerful for new Purina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. They're out there, lurking on your pasture, just waiting to infect your cattle as they graze. Cattle worms cost you money, but a Safeguard strategic deworming program allows you to deworm your cattle and lower worm burdens on your pasture, resulting in improved pregnancy rates and heavier calf weights. Plus, there's a Safeguard form for every operation. So start killing parasites where they lurk. Talk to your animal health provider today about a Safeguard strategic dewormer program. Safeguard, think strategically. Act decisively. Wanting to cut cost as well as hay? You don't have to look any further than your John Deere dealer. Pile up big bonus cash or special financing on our high quality lineup of hay tools from mower conditioners to balers. Or if you have a utility tractor in mind, take advantage of some of the best deals ever on the rugged 5 Series and 6 Series. Make tracks for your John Deere dealer now and bag big savings. When predicting the genetic merit of young Angus cattle, some genomic tests only give you part of the story. For the most complete and dependable evaluation of genetic potential, with more markers and coverage for economically important traits, there's only one genomic test 
that won't leave Angus breeders in the dark. Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're talking about the importance of investing in a good nutritional program for your cattle with cattle producers and several experts from Purina. Let's get back to our discussion. Dr. Scott, I want to begin with you. You all bring dozens of new products to the market. I'm interested to know how do you determine where to spend your R&D dollars? Well, that's a great question and, and something that, that's a big focus of ours. And the reason why I say that is that we have to research and figure out when we're going to launch the next product. So we have a pipeline that we work, mm -hmm. work with. And for us, research basically is innovative product development. Mm -hmm. So we have to have innovation or ideas. And, and where do they come from? Well, a lot of our ideas come from the problems and challenges that cattlemen have. So we get ideas from uh, producers like Ben and, and dealers like, like JD. And we try to solve those, those problems. And there are different problems all across the U.S. because of the different management styles that are out there. And so it's our job to figure out how can we solve these issues that are, that are there uh, with the programs that we have. And other ideas that we have uh, come from our sales force. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very knowledgeable. And also our, our technical uh, folks, uh, people like uh, Ted Perry, who was on Monday Night Live last night, and, and our other research team members, uh, and our consultants in the field. And from, so from a scientific standpoint, that's where a lot of our ideas come from, is from our, our internal uh, scientific staff. And then the other thing that we've added to it is professional market research, which has really helped. And Rod, you do a lot of that market research in your department. Well, that's correct, yeah. We, we really want to make sure that we have our finger on the pulse of, of the producer out there, because that's where it all starts. I mean, it, it's got to start with that producer and what the issues that they're facing, because we know that they have to remain profitable for us, for Dr. Scott and I to have a job. And, uh, and we also take advantage of, of one of the marketing tools that we have. Um, you know, from an education standpoint, we'll have about five different events a year back at the research farm yeah. where we invite dealers and producers to come back and, and uh, see what we're doing, learn some stuff about how they can, can manage their herds better. Uh, and we take advantage of that from the standpoint of, you know, we'll have a couple hundred cattlemen in there mm -hmm. from 25 to 30 states so as a marketing guy, I'm like quizzing them all the time about, you know, what are some of your needs? What's important to you? And we've really discovered some really important needs that they had that wound up uh, being part of the product development just from having those folks in there. And Ben, you were saying earlier that you actually uh, participated in one of those uh, producer tours of Gray Summit. Tell us your perspective. Yes, Kevin. Uh, uh, last year uh, in January, uh, we participated in one of the visits at Gray Summit, and it, it was an incredible visit. And I would encourage any producer that can get to Gray Summit to, to go to Gray Summit because that's really when you can see what happens on the ground. Mm -hmm. You get to see the research, the science, and you can see the passion that the Perina people are putting into their product. They really do a good job. Um, also, I think the fact that the longevity of the people that work at Gray Summit, they've been there for a long time. Uh, it's very important to them. And that's important to me as someone who wants to purchase their product. That uh, gave me a lot of confidence in their product, and, and it was a, a wonderful visit that we had there at Gray Summit. Dr. Scott, so, so we've identified a need, be it through formal market research or an idea one of your staff members has. Tell me now about the research process itself. Well, we have a different stages that we go through, and the first stage is more or less a pass-fail. Uh, we, we stir something up based on, on what we're trying to solve obviously, and put it in front of cattle. Um, if they don't eat it, we're dead. <laughs> because the palatability and intake is, is the most critical thing. And, mm -hmm. and, and really, in, if you look at digestion, you know, we're, all, we're, we're talking about ruminants. Mm -hmm. You always think, well, the rumen's the most important thing. But it may be that the mouth is the most important thing, because mm -hmm. if they don't eat it, it's not going to go to the rumen. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that work goes into the behind the scenes mm -hmm. stuff before we ever get out there. So the first step that we have is put it in front of the cattle um, and see if they eat it. If that works, then we have a, a, a full-blown study where it's more or less what we call feed them and weigh them, find out what kind of conversions we get and added gain and those sorts of things. And then we'll have to do that a few times to get the right balance of nutrients in the entire diet uh, and repeat it 
and make sure that it's repeatable because mm -hmm. if it's not, then we don't have anything to market because we don't know what to tell a customer what to expect. Mm -hmm. So if it looks good, then we'll go out and do some field testing with ranchers or, or feed yards mm -hmm. and we'll pull that information and in some cases if, if it's not working the way it did back home, we have to take it back home mm -hmm. and fix it and then go back out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we we have to kill a product because it didn't work. So if it gets through that process, uh, then we've got the opportunity to go ahead and, and market it. Uh, sometimes we'll do a local market in an area to get our hands around mm -hmm. uh, a new product because some of the things that we, we invent are so unique mm -hmm. that internally we still have to learn how to market those, position them, get our management uh, straightened out. Mm -hmm. And that's all part of the field testing, but also a an area market test is good for us too. In other cases, then we'll, we'll have a, a national launch to go along with it. So there's a whole process that we go through and there's a pass fail all, all throughout it. But, but the bottom line is that when we're done, we can go out and, and give our, our, our dealers, our sales force, something that is reliable that they can say, hey, this is how it's gonna perform. I know you've invested heavily in your research department at uh, Purina. Tell us about some of the unique capabilities. What sets you apart uh, from other companies relative to your research capabilities? Yeah. Well, the, the first thing we have are people. Yeah. And so we have uh, employees out there that have worked a long time. Uh, they understand the importance of dotting every I and crossing every T because in research there's, there's no room for error. Um, and we've got specific facilities that other, other places don't have. So for example, uh, we have a metabolism unit that we call the large animal metabolism unit. And mm -hmm. there we can look at site and extent of digestion. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do uh, in vitro studies, mm -hmm. which is test tube studies. So you take rumen fluid uh, from a cow and then incubate uh, different feeds uh, in a test tube with the rumen fluid mm -hmm. and then check digestion that way. Uh, we can also take um, what are called Dacron bags and put samples in a Dacron bag, mm. incubate those in a rumen and also look at digestion. So little things like that allow us to learn a lot about what's going on in the rumen mm -hmm. so that we can understand where we might be missing some nutrients and, and, mm. and maybe more importantly, how our products perform. So that's a unique capability for yeah. us uh, and it really helps us to cut out some of the field testing because we know what's going on inside the cattle. Sure. And I, I like to tell people that if it's a lot like weaning weight, mm -hmm. you, you can't change weaning weight unless you know what it is to begin with. Well, it's the same way with digestion and, and nutrient requirements. Mm -hmm. We can't change them unless we know where those nutrients are being digested. So that really gives us a nice edge. Well, tell us about some of the key discoveries you've made through the Gray Summit. Well, probably the the most interesting one that people find interesting is our work around intake. Hmm. And there's two, two areas of intake. One is palatability, and I think another one might be called anti-palatability. Hmm. And so with palatability, we know it's so important that animals, particularly in this case cattle, need to eat what you put in front of them. Mm -hmm. When you look at anti-palatability, you think, oh, that's the worst thing in the world. But from that, we've been able to develop what we call intake modifiers, mm -hmm. which modify how cattle approach a bunk or, or a, a self-feeder. And in so doing, we've made cattle more efficient. Mm. It's, and it's a really neat project, and, and on the human side, we've caught on to it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is that, you know, a lot of the nutritionists, uh, human dietitians, ha have shown that there's a big benefit of people being able to eat throughout the day. Mm so that you don't have these cravings at your big meals. So mm -hmm. it keeps your blood glucose levels mm -hmm. more consistent. Level. Mm -hmm. So what we've been doing for many years is we've developed snack eating mm -hmm. you know, in cattle through what we call our, our intake modifying technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so the cattle eat a little bit, walk away and come back and we'll eat later. Mm -hmm. And so that allows for a more consistent digestion uh, in the rumen, and, and we found it makes it more efficient. Give me some examples of maybe some products that you've introduced over the last couple of years as a result of your research. Yeah, well, a, a good tie into that would be our, our wind and rain hmm. mineral. Uh, two years ago, we launched an improved formulation that improved the consistency of how cows eat mineral. Hmm. 
And so we, we learned this through uh, palatability. Uh, we knew our, our ranchers always had concerns, you know, are my cows eating the right amount of mineral? Mm -hmm. Does every cow eat the same amount of mineral? And so we, we headed down that road to find that out. And as you might guess, not every cow eats the same amount of mineral. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we were able to do is to modify our, our formulation and we found out that we've got, if you, if you separate cow consumption of mineral into two different, or three areas, you got those that are, that are eating at the target, you got some that are eating more than the target, and then you got some that aren't eating a whole lot at all. Mm -hmm. What we were able to do was increase those low intake consumers mm. to get them closer to the target. So when we did that, we'd think, well, does that mean the higher consumers are gonna over consume? Mm. But they didn't. They just ate a little bit more. So we were able to reduce the variation mm. on consumption of mineral. Then we scaled up into the pasture situation and found out that weekly consumption from within a pasture, well, there was less variation or more consistent consumption with our new formulation. So wow. we launched that, that two years ago. Um, another product uh, for starting uh, cattle was Precon 5. And the neat thing about Precon 5 that we found is that you know all these years we've been have been doing a lot of work on intake modifiers. Well, we've also found things that improve palatability, hmm. and so that's what we worked with with Precon Five, and we we balanced Precon Five so that we could increase the intake and digestion of forage, get some missing nutrients for starting cattle, uh, some things like Avela Four in there for the right trace mineral uh, balance. Uh, we added some Diamond V yeast in there to help hmm. fermentation. And that whole combination uh, we put together, we compared it to preconditioning receiving chow, which was launched back in 1968. And a lot of people know about it. The, the key thing on it is cattle love to eat it. Hmm. Well, we, our comparison showed that cattle like precon five more than preconditioning receiving chow. Wow. So it's very palatable. Uh, we compared it to commodities, which a lot of folks who want to feed around five pounds will feed five pounds of commodities. Mm -hmm. And it, it did very well. And, the cattle gain pound and a half, two pounds more a day on pre wow. five. And that all is because of the right balance of nutrients and they eat more forage and get mm. more digestion out of the grass. That's outstanding. J.D., you were saying earlier uh, that you've actually had some customers uh, try Precon 5. Uh, tell us your experience. Absolutely. Um, you know, for our producers, it's a, it's a crucial time. Uh, weaning calves and, and a scary time at the same time mm. to, uh, you know, the, them calves are going out on their own and um, it's definitely a product. Cattle eat it, and they love it, and uh, do very well on it. It's been huge for us and and our producers, um, you know, to give them cattle that extra boost to be more successful when they get to that starter ration at mm -hmm. the feedlot, um, to help keep them healthy and react to maybe some of the drug programs that we are going to start those cattle off on, mm -hmm. and um, it's an easy product. It's uh, a really easy product for producers to feed, you know, five pounds per head per day, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so if it's, if it's not difficult for the producer and it's not difficult for the calf, sure. um, it's a successful product, it really is. Ben, have you had some personal experience with that as well? Uh, yes, I have, Kevin. With my uh, confidence in the, in the mineral nutrition side with Perina, I went ahead and we tried the the uh, Precon 5 this, uh, this fall, and we, uh, we usually will take uh, 20 to 25 bull calves that we develop for ourselves and some neighbors around the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started them on the Precon 5, and uh, as J.D. said, that is a critical time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when as we wean, we're you know, trying to keep sickness away, and uh, the cattle did really well. Those bull calves, they just took off. They never missed a beat, mm -hmm. and as, then as we transferred them into, uh, into a uh, finishing lot, or, or I mean a grow or development lot mm -hmm. uh, away from the ranch, uh, they just they never missed a beat. They just kept mm -hmm. on gaining. So we were very happy with the uh, with the product Precon Five. That's outstanding. Purina's dedication to excellent research is a visible component in its products. Here are what producers from around the country are saying: increased weaning weights, increased uh, conception. Um, the cattle hold their condition a lot better all through throughout the whole year, and um, very, it's a very predictable product. Uh, we know how much the cattle will eat and what it takes for them to gain a, a pound. And uh, my uh, Perina dealer comes out with a, a truck and a tank and fills them up for me. And 
and uh, keeps tabs on when they need to be refilled and uh, documents everything. And we know in every pasture what the consumption rate is. And uh, it's, it's really been profitable for us. Uh, the cattle, uh, you know, eat no more than they have to and eat only when they have to. So it's been a real good product for us. All the testing, all the research that's involved on Purina's part and everything that they do to provide the best quality of feed for the cattlemen. We felt that with all the research that they put into the product, that they knew exactly what the cattle needed and what it would do, and it has proven to do that. It, it, it provides optimum nutrition, ease of delivery. Um, the cattle like the product. We don't ever have them go off feed. With the research that Purina puts into the product, we see it in our cattle. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. We're going to talk about one of the most recent results of new product development from the Purina Research Farm, the new wind and rain storm mineral. Dr. St Scott, uh, tell us a little bit about how you've used this research process to, uh, to develop this uh, new exciting product. Well, uh, the interesting thing about uh, this technology is it's something that, that we came up with uh, with ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, with our, our friends from what we call process research. So we have some some engineers, uh, grain scientist type guys with manufacturing type degrees who, who take our, our ideas and try to get those out of the plant into a truck and into cattle. Mm -hmm. So we use, use their help in this along with our, our nutrition background to try to solve a concern and that is how can we reduce the waste mm -hmm. that you have uh, when you have a bagged mineral out there. Mm -hmm. so, so storm is our improved version of wind and rain mineral, mm -hmm. and it's more uh, resistant to, to the elements. Uh, and so we worked on it. Uh, we, we, the neat thing is we were able to come out with it quicker than we had anticipated, yes. because the, the things that we tried were so remarkably mm -hmm. um, evident. It, it, we like to say it was a difference that you can see. Yes. It, it was just obvious. And, and so we pursued it very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, and in so doing, uh, what we did, uh, we checked it at Gray Summit to make sure that we had the improvement in the, how it would resist weather. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is the cows have to eat it mm -hmm. and they have to eat it consistently. So we had no difference compared to how we were mm -hmm. uh, with our improved, uh, more consistent consumption of wind and rain mineral. So that was a good thing. Uh, and then the next phase that we have is, is field testing. Mm -hmm. And so we went out and, and we field tested it in uh, 10 different states with 25 uh, different uh, uh, ranchers and, mm -hmm. and ranches and, and, and farmer farms. Mm -hmm. uh, and we found out that they loved it and they said, well, there's a difference you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we pulled all that information together and it looked great. Mm -hmm. And then the other aspect of it is uh, there's always a question, you know, if it resists water, is it going to resist digestion? Uh, so because of the, the large animal metabolism unit where we can look at, at the mineral mm -hmm. uh, in the rumen and look at site and extent of digestion and, and can do some things uh, at the small intestine level in the rumen, we have no, no concerns about, uh, about that. So it's very digestible. Uh, so we went ahead and, and have launched it. That's outstanding. Now, Rod, you mentioned earlier that you get to talk directly with a lot of producers. What are they telling you about the product? They're really excited about it. Like, like uh, Dr. Scott said, uh, when we went out on that field test, you know, the biggest question was that we got back is, when can I get this stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, when is it going to be available? And, uh, and that was a challenge for us because, you know, it does, our process research guys put some things together, and, and so we have to make some modifications at our plants and some of those kinds of things. So it's taking a little bit longer to, to roll it out. But I really think that they're excited about it because uh, I think they get it now. And, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is, you know, I think it was sometime after the turn of the century, which kind of sounds like grandpa talking to <laughs> back, back at the turn of the century. But, 2000. Yeah, <laughs> but way back in 2000. But, but shortly after that, I saw, you know, a NOM study that said that probably about 35% of the herds out there don't get a good balanced nutrition program. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think we're changing that. I think they get it now. I think the, the producers understand that you know, mineral nutrition is key to those really important economic factors. Mm -hmm. You know, it really supports things like better reproduction, better herd health, 
so they know they have to have something out there. I mean, uh, they understand that, that it's got to get in the cow, mm -hmm. and they need to have those, those benefits because, particularly with today's markets, yeah. I mean, if you can get more calves, you know, born earlier in the season that are healthier, you know, there's a, there's a big payoff at the end of that. Well, I was going to say, so what you're really talking about is, is finding a way to get a greater return on the nutritional investment that we all make. Is exactly, that right? Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, so as they look at a product, some of the things that Dr. Scott talked about, you know, it's got to be palatable. We've got to make sure that they eat it. They need to eat it about the amount that they need to, you know, and, and they've done a great job on the consistent intake. That, mm -hmm. was, that really surprised a lot of us when they narrowed up that gap. But they maintained that, and then they reduced the waste by, mm -hmm. you know, having it more resistant to water. So it's more likely that more of their mineral investment will go through that cow so they get those benefits that they're talking about. It's not blown out of the feeder. It's not spoiled. It's not refused by some of the cattle. So, yeah, it's getting the most out of their mineral investment. It sounds like an exciting product. Up next, we'll put wind and rain storm to work. Stay with us. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Take the 60-day challenge and save up to $55 on Purina feed. Sign up at PurinaDifference.com. Ever wonder where the beef checkoff dollar goes and what it buys? The Federation of State Beef Councils is made up of the 45 qualified state beef councils that collect the $1 per head beef checkoff. Each council keeps control of 50 cents and sends 50 cents to the Cattlemen's Beef Board for use in national beef checkoff programs. Many states also choose to send a portion of their share to the Federation to expand national and international efforts. As a division of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the Federation of State Beef Councils works to support an effective state and national partnership, helping to increase beef demand through research, promotion, and education. Because producers themselves direct these programs, your beef checkoff dollars are in good hands. Learn more about the Federation of State Beef Councils by visiting beefusa.org. cost forage and improve grazing access by clearing out weeds and brush with these Dow AgroSciences herbicides. See your Dow AgroSciences representative or visit rangeandpasture.com. Welcome back. So it's a good product, but does it really work? Rod Newlick and I are here in the studio and we're going to put wind and rain storm mineral to the test, right Rod? You bet. You know, as a cow-calf producer, I don't mind spending money on mineral as long as it gets in the cow. Exactly. And, and the one thing that I hate is having to clean out a mineral feeder with all this caked up mineral in there that's, that's just a waste of, of money actually. Yeah, and Kevin, you're, you're like all the rest of our cow-calf producers out there. They, they don't mind investing in a good mineral program, but they want to make sure that it does some good. And to mm -hmm. do some good, it's got to get in the cow. So if it gets spoiled in the feeder and she won't eat it, they've just wasted that money. And the neat thing about wind and rain storm mineral is kind of like one of those cooking shows, you know, we can illustrate or demonstrate exactly how it kind of works sure. in, in real life situations. So we're going to make it rain in here Perfect. on two different mineral samples. All so right. like a cooking show, let me tell you a little bit about what I've got going sure. on. Yeah. I've got uh, equal amounts of a conventional uh, what we would call a, a fine textured meal mineral, okay. a very good mineral actually. I mean, nutritionally, it's very sound fine, yeah. and it's very balanced. Uh, the same balance of nutrients are in the wind and rain storm. The only difference is we've got the weather resistant technology in gotcha. the wind and rain storm. So what I'm going to do is make it rain now ah, on both of these. The thunder clouds you can hear are it brewing. Coming, can't you? I can hear it. We need so, a little rain. <laughs> so I'm going to put uh, equal amounts of water into uh, each of these samples. Okay. Make it rain on there, and see how it responds to that. Uh, as we go down the go down the good. line, so this is a pretty All good right. shower actually. Nice little shower. That's good. The grass the... is going to grow now. Exactly. And you've po poked some holes in the bottom of that to to, to watch so that we can to determine let the water run through. How that water is running through. And I've got a line on the bottom of the cup to show. Oh yeah. How right much there. water I put 
in each of those. Okay. And that's how much water I'm putting in there. So we can see how much water is retained yes. by the different mineral samples. So we'll make it yes. rain on the wind and rain storm. Okay. Same kind of a wind rain storm. Yeah. And see if we can kind of see a little bit of difference oh, going yeah. through there. Yeah, there's some. Now what we hope is going to happen. Water percolating, huh? <laughs> is that the water is going to run through uh, the two different samples. Yep. And uh, you can see that it's coming through the wind and rain now. Yeah. But like a cooking show where they have the magic thing, you know, where they mix we it all up have and they a stick before it in the oven. and after, don't we? And then they put it in the oven and we'll move this Slide over. Slide that over and I'll ease and this we'll over without spilling it. But, but we did this just a little before the show yeah, here. Yeah, just a few minutes ago we started on this thing. And so we did the same thing, same quantities of mineral, same quantities of water. Mm -hmm. And you can see that looking at the conventional mineral, the water doesn't quite come up to the up top, to the line, to the sure. line mm -hmm. so it retains some of the water in there. You can see on the wind and rain, storm mineral, that most of that water came through. It's okay. almost right up to the line. That's only part of the story, yeah. though. Here's the right? real test. I this want to see test. that dumped out. Now what happens <laughs> when it sits in, the, uh, sits in the feeder for a while, what okay. happens to that conventional mineral, even though a lot of it came through? Yep. I've been there before. You've, you've seen this. I have seen that. Like it. Yeah, and I'm. And I it kind of uh, looks a little bit like that, I guess. Yes. Now, when that dries out into a clump, do the cows like to eat that? No, they don't. Not That's on the ground well. right now. Yep. So, okay, here's the big test. Okay. What happens with wind and rain hmm. storm mineral? Interesting. You can wow. see that it it Just uh, like the day you pours put it right in. out. Hmm. Now, there's some there's some water on some of the product, but uh, we find that that dries out. The cows bump it with their nose and it breaks up and it maintains its palatability. So that's kind of the demonstration. That's the difference between a conventional mineral where we have some waste and new wind and rain storm where we wow. get more of the mineral through the cow. Well, you've made a believer out of me. That's quite impressive. Thanks. To learn more about wind and rain storm mineral, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be right back. You're not responsible for the weather, just the cattle. And Rangeland works as hard as you do to deliver performance, production, and profitability. Cattle need consistent nutrition. They'll get it year-round with Rangeland products from Lando Lakes. Deliver what they need free choice in weather-resistant loose minerals and mineral and protein tubs. Get the most out of your forage. See your Lando Lakes co-op for products that will stand up to whatever Mother Nature throws at us. Weather's coming in. Rangeland. Consider it done. Assuring beef quality begins with dedicated people such as Phoebe Bittler, a dairy producer, and Jim Warren, a cattle auction market owner. Both are winners of the Beef Checkoff funded National Beef Quality Assurance Award and both recognize the need for the entire industry to focus on beef quality. We've tried to put our best foot forward and try to see that um, the product that we send out of this country is the most wholesome, safest, best product that anybody could have anywhere and to be um, complimented for that effort is a, an amazing experience. It's all important and I think there's some really good protocols laid out in the uh, Beef Quality Assurance Program that will help producers to do the best job that they can do. Producers across the nation have embraced the BQA program because they're committed to producing the world's best beef. To find out how you can compete for the BQA National Awards, visit the website bqa.org. Welcome back. Let's continue our discussion with our industry experts. J.D., I want to start with you. Let's talk some more about this wind and rain storm product that you have. Do you see a fit for your market there in western Colorado? Oh, you bet, Kevin. Um, you know, we deal with a lot of extremes in northwestern Colorado, with, uh, particularly in the winter, um, with the amount of snow that we get and uh, the extreme winds that we do deal with. And, uh, you know, any time that we can help a producer get a mineral into the cattle and uh, ensure him that the investment that he's making is getting into his cattle and working um, a huge huge spot for us you know um, I think that if we can guarantee that consumption level with them cattle uh, to ensure herd health and and uh, reproductive performance um, is really going to be huge for us. Ben hearing what you've heard and seeing what you've seen do these benefits make sense to you as a producer? Well, most definitely, Kevin, uh, they make a lot of sense as far as our bottom line, if we can get the most mineral for our buck, I mean, we're, we're, we're fans of that. And definitely uh, the product, uh, the way, you know, looking at the, as far as consumption, if we can monitor that consumption and, and level that out, uh, that would be great and beneficial to us. Producers across the country can also see the value in a good mineral supplement. Here's what a few of them have to say. 
I don't feed my mineral open. I have it in a feeder that's got covers on it. But from that standpoint, uh, there was one feeder over on the back that I had that was a little open and uh, those cattle went ahead and eat that after rains and everything. There was no problem. It didn't set up. It stayed very pliable and it was very, you know, very easy to consume. We've tried all types of different minerals uh, and we've just this spring started using the, the Perina tub. We started out with those tubs uh, back in about March and uh, actually has had the best conception rate ever on our cow herd. And the final numbers are astounding. Before we started using that tub, we were, we were lucky to get 85%. My manager, Timmy uh, Luchek, told me that we were up to 95% pregnancy rate, so that's, that's great. A higher pregnancy rate now means higher profits later on. If you just figure what we were getting, say 10% less, you know, on uh, 500 head, you know, you're talking about 50 calves. Our registered calves, uh, normally we average about 2,000 a piece. So that's 100,000 bucks. Not only is the reproduction rate higher, but the correct amount of minerals in a cow's diet can also lead to healthier calves. On my little operation, it seemed like, you know, before if I'd put out a bag of, of, of mineral, it might last two weeks, it might last a week. There isn't really what you call no consistency with this new mineral putting out every week for no more cows than I got. I don't know how that broke down as far as ounces, four to five ounces per head or whatever, but every week that would just be consistent right across the board. I'm not gonna say Perina is the only mineral. I'm not gonna say they're the best mineral. But for my operation, it flat works, and so I would advise it for anyone. Purina's wind and rain storm mineral is at the cutting edge of mineral supplements. Dr. Scott, what do you see as the next step for Purina research? Well, we've been working on for, for a few years now uh, a program that we call Sustained Nutrition. And it's a program, not a product. We fit products into it. And uh, it evolves, or involves fetal programming. Hmm and uh, fetal programming for the, the viewers that, that aren't familiar with it. Uh, fetal programming refers to how we provide nutrition to the fetus uh, during gestation. And, and there's a lot of data on humans and livestock, and it's very evident that under nutrition during uh, gestation imprints poor performance in, in cattle. Uh, the opposite is if you can provide optimal nutrition uh, during gestation, then, you're, then you are imprinting a very good uh, chance for better performance for, for the cattle. And then there's some stuff called epigenetics, which is on top of that, which you can pass those genes on to um, the offspring. But it, it's not how the, the genes themselves aren't changing, it's how the genes are expressed. So you're allowing for the cattle to express their full potential basically. So it's, an, it's a neat concept, it kind of came from, from the human side. So we've had some, some products out there that, that actually influence fetal programming and with what we've seen as producers have told us with tremendous results on uh, weaning weights, conception rates mm -hmm. and those things. So, so we're focused on that and we've got some, some products that we're trying to fit into, into sustained nutrition. Then the other thing uh, is on, on the feedlot side. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, two different methods to improve the average daily gain of, of cattle. And you know what cattle are worth today, mm -hmm. so anything that we can do to improve outweight will really pay big dividends for the industry. Well, we'll look forward to hearing more about those in future shows. We'll be right back with some final thoughts from our panelists. Stay with us. No storm is too powerful for new Purina wind and rain storm minerals formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. 
Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Doc Talk. Each week on Doc Talk, we'll be discussing important issues such as livestock management and welfare, important and new agricultural research, and how to keep our food supply safe. My guests will include nationally and internationally known veterinarians and animal scientists. So if you farm, ranch, or eat, you'll find something of interest in every single episode. Watch Doc Talk every Monday on RFD TV at 4:30 p.m. or online at DocTalkTV.com. Preventing cattle pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. One, vaccinate your animals with Pilligard Pink Eye TriView to provide pink eye fighting antibodies in the tears that bathe the eye. Broad spectrum protection that cross reacts with 103 different strains of pink eye causing bacteria. Two, stop the flies that spread pink eye bacteria throughout the herd. Apply double barrel VP ear tags and Ultra Boss Pour On for up to five months of face fly and horn fly control. Three, manage the environment to reduce damage to the animal's eye from seed heads, pollen, and UV light, irritants that increase the risk of pink eye infection. With the right tools, preventing pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. Head to Denver, Colorado and join cattlemen from across the country for the 2012 Cattle Industry Summer Conference. This is your chance to meet with industry leadership and fellow cattlemen on current trends and initiatives while also making valuable contacts. Registered attendees will also have access to hot topics at the Issues Forums. Join us for the 2012 Cattle Industry Summer Conference July 25th to the 28th in Denver, Colorado. Visit BeefUSA.org for more information. Sometimes you feel like a block, and sometimes you don't. That's why Sweet Licks gives you a choice, in the bag, in the block, or in the tub. And Sweet Licks offers a complete line of vitamin, mineral, protein, and medicated nutritional supplements in the form you want. To satisfy even the most discriminating domestic livestock, even the gourmet goat, or the finicky fowl, or the connoisseur cow. For information, 187 Sweet Licks. Profitability never tasted so sweet. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. What a country. July 4th, Independence Day, we're hanging out the flag. There's a lot of folks who feel the need to tell us what's wrong with America, but the question we should ask ourselves is, where would we rather be? Would I be happier if I took my family and moved to Taiwan or Brazil or France? I look at the Irish Americans celebrating St. Patrick's Day. But how many O'Malley's and Kelly's would repatriate if they could? Wait a minute, they can, but they don't. And descendants of slaves or railroad coolies or internment camp prisoners may honor the old traditions, but they don't dream of returning to Africa or China or Japan. And what about Mexican-Americans celebrating Cinco de Mayo? Do you think for one minute they'd switch places with relatives left behind in Mazatlan or Michoacan? The answer is no, they wouldn't. And neither I nor the vast majority of Americans with faraway roots would give up our precious United States citizenship. And America continues to be a global melting pot. They come from all over the world because of the opportunity. Just ask any Dutch dairyman or New Delhi medical doctor or Peruvian sheep herder among us. And regardless of our country's troubles, they continue to pour across the border because of what we have to offer hope. America stands for freedom. We fight on its side around the world to protect it with our military might, our generosity, and our lives. Freedom is not easy, and it's not free. Freedom is a word that never sounds trite to immigrants. They know, as our soldiers know, what it costs and its true meaning. And to those of us who have always known freedom, immigrants remind us not to take it for granted. Independence Day. Am I proud to be an American? You better believe it. After all, where else could a cowboy poet make a living telling frivolous stories? That's right, friends, only in America. God bless us all.
This is Baxter Black from right here. Welcome back. We're wrapping up our discussion about bringing new nutritional and management solutions to the cattle industry. JD, I'll start with you. What are some final thoughts? Uh, I'd say some final thoughts are, uh, you know, it's an exciting time in the cattle business. And uh, for those that are interested in, in Perina feeds, um, I would say to really utilize your dealers, your local dealers that you have um, in your region um, to answer questions and ask those questions to and, and find out about products that might uh, work really well in their environment and their situation with their their operations. Ben, how would you wrap up this discussion? Well, I think Kevin, uh, looking, we need to make sure that we utilize our uh, the the mineral or mineral nutrition that we have today with uh, what Prina has done for us. Uh, this the science that's went into it. Mm. It's a great product and and it works and it, and for our bottom line, it works and and it's made us a lot more efficient. Outstanding, Dr. Scott. What would you add? Well, in research, we're all about building better cattle. Mm -hmm. And so our job is to bridge the gap between science and reality at the ranch. So with that in mind, we thank everyone who has used our products. And if you haven't, uh, we'd ask you to give us a try. Rod? Kevin, I think I'd probably wrap it up with, um, with commitment, maybe as one word, mm -hmm. um, at uh, Land of Lakes Purina Feed. And we're committed to our customer, mm -hmm. uh, and that means that we're committed to the industry, you know, mm -hmm. to have that right environment. So we do things like the Cattlemen to Cattlemen program and, and help with the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Um, and that helps us to be committed to research with Dr. Scott uh, to make sure that we're bringing those products that help those, those producers and their profit potential. So I guess that I'd wrap it up with commitment. And we appreciate your commitment and continued support, not only of this show, but of the industry at large. I mean that. Thank you, gentlemen, for what's been a wonderful, wonderful discussion. I appreciate your insight. Now, for more information on Purina's products, including wind and rain storm, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org and click on Land O'Lakes Purina Feed. Well, that's it for this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.